So when we talked about unit circles, we talked about the uh, special triangles that we had, but specifically that was in the unit circle, so the hypotenuse was equal to 1. Well, now that we've talked about uh, definitions for sine, cosine, tangent in, in terms of opposite, adjacent, uh, you know, those kind of definitions in hypotenuse, we can now actually use those trig definitions to actually come up with the values of these. And we're going to get exactly the same values as the unit circle, but I just wanted to show you that you don't have to have these triangles be in a unit circle in order for the relationships to work. So for instance, if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle like I have here, uh, if you don't have a 1 for the hypotenuse, then what, as it turns out, the side opposite to 30 degrees is going to be exactly half of uh, 2x. So for instance, I wanted to find sine 30, that would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse by using the trig definition we just talked about. So it's going to be x over 2x, and that's going to simplify down to 1 half. Likewise, you can do the same thing for, for the next two. For cosine 30, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, x squared of 3 over 2x, and you would get root 3 over 2 as the uh, exact value for cosine 30. For tangent 30, opposite over adjacent, that's x over x squared of 3, the x's would cancel and you get 1 over root 3, but then you can rationalize that and get square root of 3 over 3. Now let's take a look at the 60, because we can do this actually at the same time in the same triangle. The difference is, when we do our trig definitions, now it's going to be different for what we consider to be our opposite side. See, if we have 30 degrees, our opposite side is going to be this one. It's across the triangle from 30 degrees. But if you're using 60, then the side opposite 60 degrees is going to be this one here, x squared of 3. So when I do this definition, sine 60 degrees, 60 is right here. That's the opposite over hypotenuse. That would be x squared of 3 divided by 2x. So I have x squared of 3 over 2x, and that's why we end up getting square root of 3 over 2, which is the same value we get on unit circle. For cosine 60, 60 is here, adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be x over 2x, and you would get 1 half there. And then tangent 60, if this is 60 here, the opposite is x squared of 3, and you're dividing it by the adjacent, which is x, so you would get x squared of 3 over x, and you would get square root of 3. So you can see here that we can still generate exactly the same values for the unit circle. We're just doing it with a triangle that's not actually on the unit circle, these relationships will still work, and that's why it makes sense that we're going to get the same values. We can also take a look at the 45-45-90 degree triangle also. Here's our 45-45-90 triangle. Now for 45-45-90, we actually have that the that two legs, the two shorter uh, sides of the triangle, those are both equal. If these are both 45, then these both are going to be equal. So if these are both x, then the hypotenuse here is going to be x squared of 2. Okay, that's the special relationship there. So whatever these two sides are, just multiply by root 2, and instantly you'll have that other side there. Okay, so for sine 45, if we want to use our definitions for that, since they're both 45, we can work with this one or this one. We'll get the same answers regardless. We just take a look at this one. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That would be x over x squared of 2, opposite over hypotenuse. X's would cancel, 1 over root 2, and then, of course, we can rationalize that as always and get root 2 over 2. For cosine 45, we would have exactly the same thing because the adjacent is still x, so x over x, you would get the same thing. x over x root 2, you would still get root 2 over 2 for that one. For tangent 45, it's opposite over adjacent, x over x, and that's going to give you 1. So tangent 45 equals 1. So again, we get the same exact values that we got uh, from the unit circle. So I'm going to give you uh, another table, and I'm going to give you these sine, cosine, and tangent values, but I'm also going to give you the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. That way you have all those in one spot. So if we take those special triangles that we just talked about, of course you get these same values here in this table you've seen before when we talked about the unit circle. However, I'm going to now give you these other values, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So if you know sine, cosine, tangent, we can get all these because they're basically going to be 
uh, reciprocals, but I wanted to have all those on the table for you uh, as well so you can uh, take that down. So we just, just want to look at 30, 45, and 60 uh, for this one. Uh, so for this, the instructions are saying using the table, find the exact value without using a calculator. So whenever something says exact value, that means you don't want to put a decimal for your answer. You want to actually use the values in the table to get the answer. And we're going to do that for this one right here. So 2 cosine uh, squared of 30 minus sine 30. Now, whenever you see a square notation like that, we can actually rewrite this as 2 cosine 30 degrees and we're going to square that. That's exactly what the square means. It's a notation we usually just have it written there between the, the S and the uh, the angle that comes afterwards. But that just means exactly the same as this. You're taking cosine 30 and you're squaring it. We have minus sine 30. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the values from the table and substitute them in here. So we'll just do that uh, down below. So I have a 2 that's there. Now I want to put the value in for cosine 30 and then square it. Okay, so here's 30 degrees. We're going to go to the cosine column and that's square to 3 over 2. So we have square root of 3 over 2, and we want to square that one. But we also want to put a value in for sine 30. Okay, so sine 30 is just 1 half. So we put that value in directly here. So again, 30 degrees with the sine right there. That's where I got the value from. Okay, so now we're going to simplify on here. We have 2, and then we're going to square the top and bottom one on there, and you're going to get 3 fourths. And we have minus one half. So uh, the th the two fourths that can reduce down to three halves minus one half. So three halves minus one half will give us two halves, which is equal to uh, one. So that would be the exact value for the whole thing. So we did the square notation. We turned it into this notation. Then we plugged the values in, and then we just did some algebra, some simplifying there. Uh, to get down to our answer of 1. So let's take a look at a couple other examples. Here's another one we're going to simplify. 1 minus cosine 60 over sine 60. So no squares to deal with on this one. We're just going to get the value again off of the uh, unit circle or off of the uh, table we have here. Here's 60 degrees. We want to get cosine 60. So we just go over to the cosine column and we get 1 half. So I have 1 minus 1 half. On the bottom we have sine 60, so 60 degrees here, go over the sine, you get root 3 over 2. So we have root 3 over 2 that's going to go on the bottom. So we're done with the tables, so now we're just going to do some simplifying to get the exact value. So 1 minus a half, that gives you 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. Now we're going to flip and multiply, take the top thing, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. So 1 half times 2 over square root of 3, the 2's are going to cancel, and we get 1 over square root of 3, but uh, we want to rationalize our answer, and if you rationalize it, then you're going to get square root of 3 over 3, so that would be your final answer, that would be your exact value for 1 minus cosine 60 over sine 60. Okay, so now we have tangent pi over 4 plus cotangent pi over 4, so pi over 4 is our radian measurement for 45 degrees. You can actually get both those in the table here. Tangent, tangent of pi over 4 is 1. In fact, cotangent is also 1. So you just add that together. 1 plus 1 uh, would give you 2. So that's all you have to do on this one.